No, with Al Jazeera, we're taking you away from Inside Story to take you live to Beirut, where the Iranian Parliament Speaker Mohammed Baha Khalibaf and the Lebanese Parliament Speaker Nabi Berry are holding a press conference. Let's listen into them. جنایت و حمله نوجوان مردمه رژیم صهیونیستی به لبنان بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم in the name of God I would like first to greet all the sons of Lebanon and I have also to express condolences given all the tragic events and also the loss of the lives of several beloved ones in this war, in this barbaric war. و دولت ایران رو مجلس ایران رو و به ویژه پیام رهبر معظم انقلاب رو به مردم لبنان برسونم که مطمئن باشید جمهوری اسلامی ایران در این شرایط سخت کنار ملت لبنان دولت لبنان و مقاومت در همه صحنه ها خواهد I have conducted a visit to the state of Lebanon and I am conveying the following message from the Republic of the state of Iran from the government and from the people. This is also from the leadership of Iran that states that the Iran will continue to stand and support Lebanon as a government and people in those tragic and difficult situation. I would like also to tell you that I will leave from here, fly to Geneva in order to participate in the international meeting of all the world's parliaments. And please know that on the sidelines of those meetings and during all the bilateral meetings that I will conduct with the different speakers of the parliaments, I will convey this message that says that this oppression that the Palestinian and Lebanese people are subjected to. آواره اینجا جنگزده اینجا و اونهایی که جابجا شدن به مجروحین اینجا زیر نظر دولت لبنان امکاناتی رو اگر کریدور هوایی برای بیروت فراهم بکنه دولت این کمک ها رو انشالله در اسرع وقت به صورت گسترده برای مردم منتقل کنه و سبق ان ذکرت فی لقاء مع دولت already mentioned during my meeting with the head of the government, Najib Mikati, that Iran is ready and prepared to offer and provide all kind of assistance and aid to those displaced people and all those who are suffering from this war. However, it has to be under the supervision of a government, and we would like to have an air bridge between Iran and Lebanon in order to offer such aid. دولت لبنان، ملت لبنان و مقاومت در این زمان در زمینه‌های مختلف 
حتما حمایت خواهد کرد و ان الجمهوری الاسلامی ایرانی دی اسلامیک ریپبلیک اف ایران ویل ریمین اند ویل کنتینیو تو سپورت اول دی لبنیز دیسیژنز whether the decisions of the government or the decisions of the resistance or the decisions that are expressed by the Lebanese people and will always support it strongly. شهید نصر الله رو و همه عزیزان مقاومت رو به دوستان مقاومت خیلی ممنون We would like to thank the media and I'd like once again to express condolences to all the people of Lebanon for the death of the martyr Hassan Nasrallah the leader of the resistance and all the other leadership who also died. Peace and blessings be upon you. Yeah, if you've just joined us, we've just watched the uh, tail end of a press conference there by the Speaker of Iran's parliament visiting uh, Beirut, a show of solidarity, obviously, from Iran, uh, suggesting also that Iran would be ready to step in uh, to assist with uh, the humanitarian situation uh, in uh, the country, suggesting the creation of, of an air bridge from um, Iran to Lebanon to supply aid. Um, also listening into all of that, uh, I'm, actually, let's move on. We will not go to our correspondent, but... Uh, OK, the news conference uh, comes as Israel is threatening people across 22 villages in southern Lebanon, ordering them to leave the area or risk death. The military's forcing the residents to head north to the Alawi River as it continues to attack several areas along the border. It's also bombarding large swathes of the Becca Valley in the east, parts of which have long been seen as Hezbollah strongholds. In Karak, at least four people were killed and 17 more were injured by an Israeli airstrike. Hezbollah says it's launched a series of missiles at an Israeli military base near Haifa. Nor Oda has the latest from the Jordanian capital, Amman. A reminder, Nor is in Amman because the Israeli government has banned Al Jazeera from reporting inside the occupied West Bank and also Israel. There's been a shift in the way uh, that Hezbollah is attacking targets inside Israel. We saw that warning issued by Hezbollah to residents of uh, inside Israel uh, saying that if you live near military installations, if your uh, buildings are being used by the Israeli military, then they will be targeted by Hezbollah. And throughout the day today, we've seen statements from the Israeli army here and there uh, talking about sirens going off across northern Israel into Safad, uh, but also in Haifa earlier in the day and confirmation from the Israeli army that up to 30 uh, rockets were fired in the Safad area in northern Israel. Um, so these things have been nonstop, but they've been not just directed at border towns inside Israel, but deeper into Israel to specific military targets to uh, areas that were not under attack, uh, particularly before Israel started its offensive against Lebanon. OK, let's reflect on what we've just heard from the Speaker of the Iranian Parliament, who's been uh, speaking in the, the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Ali Hashem is uh, standing by, also in Beirut. Ali, I wonder if you can help us understand what we uh, just saw a few minutes ago. Why, firstly of all, firstly, why we are hearing from the Iranian parliamentary speaker at all speaking in Beirut? Is this an unusual thing to see? Well, it's a clear message from Iran to Lebanon on one side and also to Hezbollah on the other side that uh, it's supporting them, uh, given the fact that this is not only um, a fight between Lebanon and Israel. Actually, Iran is instrumental in this whole uh, picture, and 
Hezbollah is a strong ally of Iran. Besides, we've seen, we've seen the Iranian foreign minister coming to uh, Lebanon in the past few days. Today, Qalibaf, the, uh, Mohammed Bakr Qalibaf, Iran's speaker, came to Lebanon also with his plane. And actually, it was significant that he was his pilot. He was the, the man driving the plane. And this was a kind of a position of uh, defiance towards uh, Israel in a, in, a, in a way. At least the Iranians are trying to reflect it in this way. And at the same time, him saying that they want to have this bridge between Lebanon and Iran to send aid. Uh, of course, in, in a way or another, uh, the Iranians here are trying to say clearly, especially after a lot of conspiracy theories were rising in Beirut over the past uh, weeks since the killing of uh, Nasrallah, that the Iranians are distancing themselves from this uh, conflict, that they are inside this conflict, politically they are inside this conflict, just the same as they are uh, on the uh, military side. Yeah, it's an interesting point, Ali, the idea that uh, Iran feels, um, after, particularly after the death of Hassan Nasrallah, that they need to very openly uh, reinsert themselves uh, into um, this ongoing spiralling crisis between Israel and uh, Hezbollah. I wonder about the viability of this air bridge, though. I mean, clearly, the Israelis who are watching uh, what uh, the Iranians say will be will be most certainly viewing the idea of an Iranian air bridge to Lebanon with raised eyebrows. It's not going to be an easy task, especially that the Israelis in the past weeks, they ordered the Lebanese uh, uh, government to refuse uh, Iranian planes from landing in Beirut International Airport. There was a clear incident where uh, there was a message sent to the Lebanese government, and the Lebanese government uh, took by the message and um, just uh, turned back an Iranian plane before it arrived in Lebanon. So having an air bridge is going to be a very bold move. Is the Lebanese government able to take such a move? That's another question. Are the Iranians really ready to um, go for such a challenge in such a situation where their planes might be threatened to be hit by Israel. Also, this is going to be uh, a very uh, intriguing question. But the issue is, is that right now, Iran is in the middle of this whole conflict with everyone anticipating an Israeli attack on Iran. So the probability of having Iran in, into this whole picture it's not only, only about probability, it's a fact. And Kalibov is in Lebanon just to say that the, the, the different layers of power in Iran are extending their uh, support to the Lebanese and, of course, to Hezbollah. All right, Ali, many thanks there. Uh, Ali Hashem for us there in the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Just to recap what we've just seen, we've been hearing from Iran's uh, parliamentary speaker who's been... Speaking in Beirut, uh, extending a show of solidarity for the country of Lebanon and offering also the possibility of an air bridge, something that undoubtedly the Israeli military will be viewing with a degree of consternation. More on that 